الشيطان الرجل بسم الله I greet you with the best of greetings by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so it's my pleasure to be here and um, I want to stand on existing protocol and say um, welcome to our mothers on the high table. Uh, Hajia Ibrahim, and I also want to greet the chairperson especially and say thank you very much for coming and may Allah grant your son complete shifa. So, um, are we ready for today's session? Thank you so much for being here. Are we ready to learn practical tips for increasing the peace in our heart and in our homes? Thank you, uh, my sister, my friend, for welcoming me. <laughs> so, um, okay, so before we proceed, I would want everyone to write at least three goals down three goals for why you are here today and these goals as we go on i want you to put action points down under each goal from things you have played from the session we are having three goals <laughs> So, uh, our topic is making our homes a heaven for peace. about the physical environment, right? Now, the topic actually goes beyond, you know, the physical environment we inhabit in the home. We want to look at the four dimensions of, individ of us as an individual, as a human being. When you look at a human being, you can see the body that the human being inhabits. So that's the first thing you see. It's like you're looking at the monitor. If you're looking, if you're talking about an operating system, for example, a computer. So the body is, you know, what you see. It's the the operating the hardware. Then we we'll would look at the mind, which is like the software. And then we look at the heart. A computer does not have a heart, does it? Then we also look at the soul. When you see a human being, a human being has all of this. Not minding that what you can see is the body. We go deeper than the body. And when we are born, and as we grow up, we are taught how to take care of our body. We are sent to school to learn, you know, um, knowledge that we can use sometimes in our professional lives. Some of the things that we need, the, the soft skills that we need to actually live our lives, emphasis sometimes is not placed so much on it, which is how to take care of our hearts, which is the seat of emotions. And I'll have to laugh on, as Muslims, we know that Islam is a total way of life. And when it comes to Islam, we are taught how to pray, we are taught how to fast, we are taught how to, you know, we know the five pillars. We know to, you know, profess faith. We know to do, observe our salat. We know to observe um, our fast, whether the um, obligatory ones or the voluntary ones. We know to, sometimes we are taught to pay zakat and sadaqah, which is the minor form. And we also know that ah, we see people around us, we 
going for Hajj. Alhamdulillah for Ramadan. May Allah accept our ibadah in this Ramadan and enable us in the maximum benefit from it. Now, what we would focus on today would be on, four, on the four dimensions with special focus on regulating our emotions. Because that's, um, when you look at the definition of peace, peace is defined as the absence, the freedom from disturbance. So would we say that we actually have freedom from life's disturbances? It's how we show up in spite of those disturbances that we're going to be learn, we will learn some tips on how to show up better in spite of those disturbances that we experience in life, which is where peace in the home comes from. Because the home, all of us here today, we, we come from a home. The home is the smallest unit in any society. Anybody you meet came from somewhere. So when you have a collection of homes, those collection of homes form a community. When you have collection of communities, those collection of communities form a state, um, a collection of states form a country, collection of countries form, you know, the world. So, everybody you meet in the world, they come from somewhere, which is why it's very important for us to mind our homes. Um, like the chairperson said, the um, queen of the house is us, the mothers. The laps of the mother is the first place where the child learns character, learn manners, learn how to live life, how to regulate emotions. The child models, the child you know, copies what they see rather than what they hear. But we have a culture of telling the child how to behave. Sometimes we are not behaving like that. Oh, mind your language, sit down well, talk nicely. If we're not doing it, the child is not going to understand the words we're speaking. We have to model this to the child. We have to show the child how to behave, how to regulate their emotions. If we are, if we are fond of you know, uh, insulting the child when they do wrong, if we're fond of hitting the child, what we're telling the child is, that is how to respond when you're upset. How can we model the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is our role model? The, the Prophet brought, brought up Anas, and Anas said he never hit him or told him a bad word. He was not even his child. But what do we do today? You know, there is a story, story going around of a mother who cursed her own son because he broke something that was precious to her. And yes, let it came to pass. She cursed him that, may you be crushed. And years later, a wall actually crushed him. And she has forgotten that incident. So, how we regulate our emotions is key to making our homes a place of peace. Now, we're going to look at some of the how. And when we, when, we, when we look at the how, we're going to look at how to use our mind, that's our mental faculty. We, in um, your linguistic programming, we call it um, enhancing our mental capital. Because it's like whatever you put in your mind is a deposit in your mental account. So, enhancing your mental capital is putting in the right things that will enable you to live your best life and also contribute, be of benefit, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that the best of us are those who bring benefit to ourselves and others. So, bringing benefit to people starts with what we know. We're told to seek knowledge as Muslims. Knowledge is our inheritance. Wherever we see it, we pick it. Beneficial knowledge. So, what do we know? What do we know about self-management? What do we know about emotional intelligence? What do we know about emotional resilience? Which is which are soft skills we need to actually, you know, live our best life, to live a peaceful home. 
Do we even know these terms? Or is this the first time that we are encountering these terminologies? So these are key when it comes to peace. And when we're able to enhance our mental capital by enriching our mind with the beneficial knowledge, we also have to look at how we translate this knowledge to behavior. Before we can translate this knowledge to behavior, there is a gap, and that gap is how we process this knowledge, which is the heart, the seat of emotions. Your thoughts affect your feelings, and your feelings affect your actions, which is at the level of what you do with your body now. Let me give us, you know, an example. When you look at the Jega Urubebe face off, when Urubebe came out and, you know, he was uh, saying some very nasty things, what was Jega doing? <laughs> he was calm. Do you think he was not provoked? So we all have triggers. It is how you respond rather than react that makes you a person of peace or a person that will be described as, you know, um, a person of negative. So, when you are able to hold that gap for yourself between how you process your thoughts, how you allow that affect your feelings and the kind of action you take. So you see that when that happened, he was triggered, but he was calm under that pressure and he was able to help us as a nation because he was able to maintain his school. So are we able to do this? Can we start practicing? So that gap is where we need to process. We need to have what we call a pause button in our body. That pause button is an imaginary one. You can just press it when you want to pause. 